All right. Well, so we introduced formal charge, and the biggest reason we use it is to choose among the different Lewis structures that we can develop for any given formula to make sure that we've picked the one that is best. Now, here are three resonance structures for N2O, dinitrogen monoxide. Now, you will notice, first of all, that we have the N's and then the O. We do not have O in the middle, even though, you know, hey, it's two N's and an O, why couldn't we put one with an O in the middle? So let's start with why not? Okay, well, if it's going to be in the middle, we know we've got this to start with, right? I guess we better do a little count, though, because that's what we always need to do. Two nitrogens that bring in five, that will be ten electrons, and an oxygen that brings in six. So I have 16 electrons to work with. What should I do with this? I mean, um, I've already put two and four. I could do six and eight because after all, I know I need an octet on that oxygen, right? Because the oxygen is the most electronegative, it's gonna get its octet first, right? So if I try to do that, I'm going to end up with two, four, six, eight, and then like this. Okay, so two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. What would the uh, formal charges look like on this? Well, the oxygen had come in with six, and now if I look at it, I see one, two, three, four. Oh, that is not good. That would be a formal charge of plus two. And the nitrogens came in with five, and now they have one, two, three, four, five, six. So they're each at a negative. All right, so those formal charges are very high, okay? So the formal charges are very high. That's not promising to begin with. And even worse, between nitrogen and oxygen, oxygen is the most electronegative, and yet we have a positive formal charge on it. We would expect if you have two like this, that the positive formal charge would be on the more electropositive and the negative formal charge would be on the more electronegative element. So when you consider that uh, oxygen is electronegative compared to the nitrogen, it should have the negative formal charge. Mm, it didn't happen. Darn it. So this is just not an option. So we're just going to go ahead and work with these that were developed up here. They've already been written, so we can sit there and analyze each of them. So the first one was this, and we're just going to formalize. What are the formal charges here, right? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it came with five. It has five. No problem. No formal charge involved at all. It's a zero. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it has a formal charge of plus one because it came with five, but now it only has four. And this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It now has seven electrons when it came in with six electrons. Okay, so there we have how that one works out. The second one that we developed was a nitrogen single bonded to nitrogen and triple bonded to oxygen. Okay, there's the second one. And let's look at the formal charges there. All right, so I make my little circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, it's got seven electrons now. That's not too good. Okay, it had five, now it's got seven. And this one, one, two, three, four. Okay, well, that's a positive formal charge there. And one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and another positive charge. Uh, no, that's, if, if possible, that might even be worse than the one with the oxygen in the middle, but because uh, all three have formal charges on them. Okay, and lastly, N, double bond N, double bond O. All right, now let's look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six it had come in with five. It has one more electron than it used to. 
This one has one less electron than it used to, and this one's at a zero. All right, so this one is just no, that is not the best possibility. These two are still in the running because it's a single positive and a single negative formal charge. However, when we look to see where the negative charge is, we find in one case it's on the oxygen and in the other case it's on the nitrogen. Since the oxygen is more electronegative, this is the best possible Lewis structure for dinitrogen oxide. Like I said, we use it to figure out which structure is the best, but it is not a real charge. It is just used to determine the difference between the resonance structures we can develop. And if we can find one where the formal charge on every atom is a zero, well, huzzah, that is exactly what we want. But a lot of times that isn't possible, and the best ones the one where we have uh, the lowest formal charges, closest to zero. And if we have any negative ones, they should be on the atoms of the most or the more, if relatively speaking, because we have a, maybe a large atom and there's lots of different ones in there, electronegative element. That is very important. So I always get a lot of questions on the Lewis structures for these polyatomic ions in particular. So let's just do a couple. Phosphite, PO3 with a 3 minus charge. So we go and we say, there's a phosphorus. It's going to bring in five electrons. There's three oxygens, each of which is bringing in six electrons. And there's an overall negative charge of a minus three. So that's three more electrons. This brings us to a grand total of 26 electrons that we need to place. Now, the oxygen is the more electronegative, so it's going to come to the buffet table first and grab its eight. So that's 24 gone. That leaves you with two electrons left over, and those are going to exist as a lone pair, and they can't be on the oxygens. They've already gotten their share, so they're going to go on to the phosphorus. So let us start drawing. There's the lone pair on the phosphorus. Each of these oxygens has to be attached, and each of the oxygen has a full octet on it. So here we have our first idea of what the Lewis structure should look like. Now, we are going to also go back and calculate the formal charge to make sure that this makes sense. Phosphorus came in with five, and it now has one, two, three, four, five. Okay, formal charge is zero on the phosphorus. That's fine. The oxygens each came in with six. Every one of these looks the same as the others because it's a single bond to the phosphorus and then the rest of the lone pairs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it has a formal charge that is a single negative. Every one of these has that. And that's okay, because overall, using the, you know, I should put brackets on it, but in the book they just put this one corner of the bracket. This is an ion. It should have a negative 3 charge on it. And there they are, 1, 2, 3, the formal charges add up to the overall charge. So this makes perfect sense. Now let's do one more that I often get asked about. And that is nitrate. Nitrate is NO3, and it has a single negative charge. So once again, we'll do the one nitrogen at five. It brings in that. The three oxygens are each going to bring in six. So that's an 18. And one more electron for the charge. So overall, we have 24 electrons to place. There are not going to be any lone pairs because the three oxygens each come in, grab their eight, and leave nothing behind. So no lone pairs. So if I draw this, I might start by drawing nitrogen and each bond out here. Now you'll notice I'm breaking from my tradition of doing it north, south, east, west, 
That's because I know that these are going to spread out in this pattern. We'll talk about that in the next chapter, but I know they're going to spread out in this pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and put the oxygens all out here and do this. Now, if I do this so that all of the oxygens look exactly the same, I would find that each one of these had a single negative for its formal charge. Goodness, well this is just messed up altogether. The formal charge would be a positive two and we're breaking the octet rule for the nitrogen. So this is not good. No, 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 not good at all. So we're gonna end up taking one of these lone pairs and saying, you know what, let's make that an additional bond. Now, it wouldn't matter if I did it to this one or that one instead of this one. That would be the three different resonance structures. But here I can just say if I do that, then these will remain with the single negative formal charge. This will get better. Instead of being a plus two, it'll be a plus one for its formal charge. And this one, okay, so this is gone because it went there. Two, four, five, six. Oh, came in with six to have six now. This has a zero formal charge. Now if I look at all of the formal charges that exist, I've got one positive, two negatives. That adds up to a single negative, which is what I want. But that's one of the three structures, like this. Or you could draw it with the double bond down here or over here. It can't indulge in hypervalency because the nitrogen is not low enough in the periodic table. It's a pure in period two. It has two s and two p orbitals, but it has no d orbitals because no d orbitals exist 